We're going to discuss some of the components that come with the ECI. The first is the one inch spacer plate made of billet aluminum and it's fully anodized. This unit is for the 4150 style carburetor. Right here we have the fuel injector rail. This is made of billet aluminum as well and it is anodized also. This kit comes standard with a 30 pound AC Delco injector. On both sides of the fuel injection rail, we have ports. So if your fuel comes from either the passenger or driver's side, you can plug the fuel line into either side. We also have a plate for the 4500 style Dominator. This is also one inch thick, is anodized, and is built aluminum as well. It uses the same injector rails as the 4150 model and has the same ports on both sides. The difference is this has dual injectors. This kit will come standard with two 30 pound injectors. Next in the kit is pre-packaged and it's a dash six to quarter inch NPT fitting to hook your fuel line up to the, uh, the fuel rail. And it also has a weld in um, O2 sensor bung. We are looking at possibly adding a clamp on bung in the future, but for now it's gonna come in with a weld in bung. Also pre-packaged in the kit is all the hardware to mount it. So we did this in the event that any consumer doesn't have a spacer um, and they needed the extra thread in order to add the one inch spacer plate. It comes with the fasteners as well. It also comes with two gaskets for the above and below the spacer plate. Also included in the kit is the ECU. This ECU is injection molded and it comes with two mounting, um, two mounting holes. We recommend that you mount this anywhere that you can find, you know, that you have space, but be advised to keep this away from any exhaust so it doesn't get too hot. It is weatherproof, proof, like I said. On this side of the ECU, it's got the main connection for the wiring harness, which we'll look at next. And it's also got the small HDMI port, which you will plug into to do any programming or changes for your ECI. It also comes with a Bosch wideband O2 sensor. And then the wiring harness. The wiring harness has the large plug that, that hooks up to the ECU. It has the female plug to hook into the wideband O2 sensor. It has two plugs for the injectors. The 4150 only uses one plug, so in the event that you're only using one, you don't need to do anything to the second one. The second one is more for the 4500 style, or if somebody on a 4150 or any other style wants to put two injectors to it. It's simple to wire. You have your 12 volt, your red for your 12 volt switched ignition source, and then a black for a ground. The other wires include a temp sensor. So we'll discuss the cold start feature, but the, you can hook up a single wire um, temperature sensor. So in the order, of, if you want to use that, use a, uh, as far as the, uh, the cold start, you want it to reach a certain temperature before it shuts off, you can hook that up as well. The other part is, is, it, is an RPM input. So one of the cool features about this product is it can read air fuel re ratios and adjust and add fuel that way, but it can also add it for a min max RPM setting. So if you're racing or you're doing any off idle acceleration and you set the minimum RPM to 2000 RPM and the maximum to 6000, the ECI will start injecting fuel at 2000 RPM and run until 6000 RPM where it'll shut off. The inputs will be, um, you know, you'll, you'll select the number of cylinders for the vehicle, whether four, six or eight. Um, and you'll also select if you want the startup injection or the cold start to work. So you can disable the cold start function if you choose, if you don't want that. If you use the cold start function, what you're gonna use is you're gonna set the idle air fuel ratio. So that's the input that you'll put in there. Um, also the delay. So if you are on a keyed ignition source and you hit the ignition, if you want it to delay before it starts injecting, um, the total time that it's running um, in terms of seconds, and then the duty cycle. So how much you actually want the, uh, the injector, how, how in percentage, you know, how long it's turned on. So those are, those are the, the inputs that you can put into for, uh, you know, for the cold start and the idle function. And then the injector one and injector two features are, again, they're both the same, but they're both controllable. Um, assuming you're using both injectors, you can control them. If you're only using one injector, then obviously you're only gonna use the input and, and input the values for, for one injector. So you'll set the air fuel ratio. So if you want it to be 13-0, never go leaner than 13-0, you'll input that. We also have um, injector functions such as sensitivity, duty cycle, and frequency. So you can adjust all that as well. Um, and then there's also 
a, a max injection time in terms of seconds. So if you, if, if for some reason you feel you want a safety feature or you only want it to run for so long or you, you however you wanted it, there, there's a timed function in there as well. So if you put t uh, 20 seconds, it'll only run for 20 seconds and then it'll come off regardless of what happens. So we have that. One of the neat features that, that I wanted to talk about that we've also added is, is a progressive function. So there's a progressive add delay, a progressive loop, a progressive amount, and a pro progressive duty cycle. So the progressive feature takes over. So if you set a duty cycle, let's say at, at 30%, you have an air fuel ratio at 13 to one, and you put a duty cycle at 30%, you can click the, the progressive function. And the progressive function is almost a secondary function to where if it's not, reaching the 13.0 uh, air fuel ratio at that 30%, the progressive function takes over and it progressively goes beyond that and adds more and more fuel to try to compensate to get you down to 13 to zero. So it's a, gr it's a great function. Uh, we've seen it work phenomenal on the dyno, but if you're, that, that's for more race feature. Uh, you know, if you're uh, you know, cruising down the street or just doing a lot of cruising, if that, that function you probably won't need to worry about a whole lot. So, but that is in there and that's in there for obviously injector one, injector two. We've talked about the startup, the cold idle feature. Um, now the miscellaneous is the min max RPM function, which obviously I'm a big believer in. That's why we keep talking about it. So you will set the min RPM, the max RPM. Um, there's also an idle RPM as well. So if you're using the RPM function, you can have it come on, only set it at idle during the idle cycle or the min max function or feature when it's like I said, going down the racetrack. Why purchase this over EFI? So this is a great question we get that we've already been getting asked this a lot. We design this as, again, as a supplemental fuel system to take any efficiencies out of a mechanical carburetor. We felt that we could add an electronic feature and take advantage of an existing carburetor and, and spruce it up with some electronic advantage. It is not designed to, you know, it, it's, it's supposed to take place and use with your existing carburetor. And, you know, if you want to, there's applications for EFI and there's applications for carburetors. We are using this and we designed and developed this to use it for everybody that has a carburetor. Is this the same thing as a throttle body injection? No. The ECI is designed to use a, is a, a supplemental fuel sor source for your existing hardware or your existing carburetor. It is not an actual full throttle body injection. It is to use for your existing hardware. What carburetor will this work on? So we've, we've, we've answered that a few times. Um, 4150 style Holley carburetor, 4500 Holley style carburetor, and then also the QuadraJet carburetor. Do you need to install it on a carburetor that's new or can it be used with an old carburetor? Either or, it doesn't matter. The system will, will, will compensate for an old carburetor, whether it's tuned poorly or tuned good. It'll also compensate for a new carburetor. Remember, you know, this is, this is to help and compensate and take advantage of, of, of the electronics that are available now to cure any inefficiencies in a carbureted application. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's new or, or used or rebuilt. It doesn't matter what kind of, wh how, what the condition of the car carburetor is in. Do you have to weld the bung to the exhaust for the O2 sensor? Yes, it comes prepackaged in the kit like we discussed. You have to drill a hole in your exhaust and you will have to weld the bung in. Um, we have been looking at clamp-on solutions and we're really close. We may offer that as an accessory or we may include that in the kit. But as of right now, the kit will, will come standard with a weld-on O2 sensor bung. Minimum max fuel pressure. So this is a good question. I was hoping this would come up so we can talk about that. So we've tested this as low as, um, as 6 PSI and we've tested it as high as 25 PSI. So um, it did work fine at 6 PSI. Um, and the reason we did that is because for somebody that has a mechanical fuel pump you want to be able to tie off right at the uh, you know past the pump and supply this so you're going to get six seven eight nine ten nine pounds of, of fuel pressure and it does work the cold start cold start function works phenomenal and then anything through the rpm range depending on how you set it works too so your minimum is going to be any minimum that what's put out for a mechanical fuel pump um, the max pressure um, when we were doing testing we tie off uh, right on the pressure side of the pump. So this is, you know, before the, the regulator. So if you have a, a single carbureted application and you're running pressure to a regulator and then regulator to the carburetor, we tied off right before the regulator and we saw anywhere from 19 to 25 pounds of, of fuel pressure. That worked phenomenal too as well. So um, that's what we'd like to see, but it will, you know, we don't want to say it won't work for mechanical fuel pump applications. So 
So those are the mins and the, and the, and the maxes that we had on fuel pressure. We also um, do sell small inline fuel pumps that will put out up to 10 PSI. And that's something that we will offer as an accessory. If you want to isolate this system away from your existing fuel system, either mechanical or electrical, these inline pumps are going to be a great addition to that too. And plus they'll put out upwards of, of 10 PSI. So that'll, that'll fire the injector and do the job as well. Now, uh, you know, higher horsepower and bigger cubic inch engines, you know, you're going to, you know, you, you may want to have a little bit more fuel pressure. It all depends on how much fuel you are trying to add and how you're, you know, trying to take advantage of the injector. Does this require an electric fuel pump? So, so no, um, I just answered that, like I said. So you can tie off from your mechanical fuel pump um, and it will work. So it does not. But if you want to put an inline pump in like we did, like we just described, you can do that as well. But to answer your question, no, it does not require an electric fuel pump. So another thing that's come up is the hood clearance, right? So, you know, this is a one inch thick spacer. Um, you know, if you're already running a spacer, obviously it's not an issue, but um, you know, we, we tried to, obviously we added the studs to help you with that. But if you do have hood clearance issues, you know, and, and you're running a K and N air filter, we do make additional drop base air filters, you know, so you can compensate that way and still run the same size air filter. Um, but we tried to make this as low as possible being only a one inch, only a one inch total height. Will this work uh, for alcohol or methanol applications? So we've been getting this question a lot and the question is, ab and the answer is absolutely, we, you, you can. So again, depending on, on your application, you know, uh, whether you're drag racing or, or some other uh, type of motorsports, you know, you just may have to make some adjustments um, to uh, what size injector you use. The uh, ECI interface allows you through a drop down menu to select the fuel. Um, we will have a pre-loaded AFR for something like methanol. So once you drop down and you select that, the pre-loaded AFR ratio that we think it should be will come in there and then you can make the adjustments from there. But to answer your question, absolutely, this can be used with alcohol and methanol applications. So what air fuel numbers does it shoot for? Could it be used as a supplemental fuel for a dry shot of nitrous? So the system is already, it'll be pre-programmed with a set point for the air fuel ratio, depending on if it's for gas, methanol, or ethanol. So depending on where, what you're using there, it'll already be pre-programmed in there. But that's the beauty of this, this product. You can plug your laptop in and you can change it. So you can, you can adjust it to any, come on at any air fuel ratio you want and it'll supplement fuel at any point that it goes above that air fuel ra uh, ratio. Now, can it be used for a dry shot of nitrous? Absolutely. We think this is going to be one of the pros and, and it's going to be used widely, uh, this system will. Um, you may have to make some adjustments um, since the injector that it comes with is only a 30 pound inject injector and the way it sits is only three to 5% of supplemental fuel. Um, you may have to add, you know, put a bigger injector on it or possibly add a second injector if you're on a 4150 style or if you're on a 4500 style, you may want to up both of those. They are regular available AC Delco injectors and so you can do that and, and, and again you can preset and set any air fuel ratio that you want whether you're running nitrous or even a, a you know supercharged you know blow through application you can do that as well. What is the max horsepower rating of this system? So again we don't have any max you know setting because this is a fuel supplement and the way that it's set up the 4150 is set up to be three to five percent of additional fuel so it's any application where you can add that fuel and it'll still you know it'll it'll run like you want it to so you can adjust again more fuel pressure you know we've talked about the features inside the uh, the program you know you can um, put a bigger injector in here so it can handle any of that depending on what you throw at it and depending on how you do the setup will this only help when the carb is running lean how should we adjust it if the carb is running too rich yes so this is designed to only help when the uh, when the when the engine is lean so you set the parameter of the air fuel ratio and any time that the, the air fuel ratio goes above that reading the ECI then injects fuel if it is constantly below that reading it will not do anything so it's only for lean conditions a supplemental fuel for lean conditions will you gain horsepower so that question, you know, we, we've been getting asked that a lot. Now, if you have a, a carburetor, uh, let's use a drag race application, obviously, because I, I drag race and familiar with that. And a lot of our technical partners are drag racers as well. So 
you know, if you have a carburetor that's running really lean and has a lot of lean spikes, you know, um, and the motor's not happy going down the racetrack, you know, you, you could lose ET and then obviously the motor's not making as much power as it possibly could be. And, and those are some of the mechanical inefficiencies that you will see in a, in a normal carburetor. So, so if the if if your your setting and your your carburetor is off just enough and it has those spikes, what we can do, it, or what the ECI will do, is it'll add fuel, and at that point, it'll bring it back into where it's you know quote unquote more happy, and at that point, it should make a little bit more power, but. We can't say it will or it won't because we don't know the application. So it all depends on the tune-up. It all depends on how much pressure you put at it. It all depends on you know what kind of application you're doing. 